Gamers, today is a big day because I have yet another 30 plus build ideas just for you. From a forest shrine, an ocean cave, to an ocean garden, and even this massive blaze spawner, there will definitely be multiple builds that'll make you want to start building. And without wasting any more time, let's get into the first build. For the first one, we have this fully custom beach design. And uh, don't judge me as uh, it just kind of ends right here. Uh, just don't worry about that. But yeah, so for this beach, we've kind of just expanded the length of the beach. So it's like more of a gradual decline into the ocean. We've added some extinguished campfires and little stones and stuff on the beach for some extra decorations and also these custom palm tree designs as well. For the next build we'll be taking a quick look at this swamp village idea. So basically this was our idea if villages could generate in swamps and what they'd look like. So as you can see all of the houses are pretty different looking. We also have a couple of unique generation uh, thingies here. So we have like a man-made pond for like the town center. We also have this big weeping willow tree over here as well. Uh, might need a little bit of a trim. And because there's a lot of water in swamps we made it so that the Buildings can kind of generate on these stilts in the water. So yeah, they generate on these big platforms and they could also have bridges that connect them between the main kind of village as well. Next up, we have this mountain base or cliffside base design. So firstly, we have an elevator down here that takes you up to the actual base. And taking a quick look on the inside, as you can see, we have our storage, brewing, enchanting bedroom and our furnace section over here. And then our elevator also takes us up to the roof where we have a little bit of a crop farm as well. This base also has its own full tutorial video on my channel as well so be sure to check that out if you want to build this for yourself. Next up, we have this little build, which is a forest shrine. Maybe you just want to add like a little landmark to a forest or something that you live near. Or I mean, for whatever reason, maybe you just want to build to create. And uh, I mean, this does look pretty cool as well and can look creepy at nighttime. Yeah, so we've got our actual shrine here, which is just made up of like some stone blocks. And then we have our like main kind of area where the guy would read from the book, I guess. And then we have our like worshipping seats as well. And we have some candles that kind of surround this too. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different river designs with the first one here being the medieval design and as you can see we've just decorated like a pretty plain and standard vanilla river here by adding in a nice little bridge over it this also leads over to a bit of a campsite here we've got our actual campfire and a couple of chairs and then we've got like a little storage pile over here as well for the next one we have a japanese themed river so for this one we've added in some campfires underneath the water here to make it look like the river is kind of like steaming like you'd see that in some like zen gardens and stuff like that for the bridge we have one with a Japanese aesthetic, of course. So we've got like acacia wood and stuff. And on this side, we have a jungle with a bunch of bamboo and stuff around the place. And we also have this nice Japanese well over here too. For the next river design, this term, we have an overgrown theme. So we've just got like a bunch of rocks around the place and some bushes too. And then we have a whole bunch of trees to line the other side. And then for some extra detail, we also have this ruined tower thing as well. And now for the final river design, we have this established kind of medieval theme, I guess. So we've got a nice stone pile pathway that leads over to this arched bridge design. Something cool about this is that we have like some grates on the sides to let the water pass through. And we've also lined the entire river by using some stone and also some grass as well. Next up, we have this build, which is an ocean garden. Uh, don't judge me as the back of this isn't done because you weren't really intended to see that angle. You meant to just kind of see this angle here. But yeah, I just created this build by using some reference. It was a pretty cool picture that I found on Reddit. It's meant to be like a petrol station, like kind of like the roof thing. And uh, it's as if like the whole area has flooded or something like that. I don't really know what it's meant to mean, but it looks pretty cool to me. Next up, we have four medieval towers of varying conditions or like stages of decay, I guess. So the first one here we have is the pristine variant. So as you can see, it's in tip top shape. We've got a nice intact flag. We've got some contained plants around the place. I mean, it's a little bit wacky, but it's contained nonetheless. Then as we move on, we have the worn variant. So as you can see, the leaves are starting to kind of grow past where they were initially placed. We've also added some texture with some mossy stone bricks and some andesite and stuff. And we've added some little gaps into the walls as well. Now into the third stage of decay, we have the damaged stage. So as you can see, the flag is just completely gone. The leaves have pretty much overtaken the build at this point. And we've also got a large chunk of damage taken out of the tower here as well. And now for the final one, the ruined stage. As you can see, it's no longer a tower. It's a shell of its former self. We've even added a little bit of a story as if some people have kind of moved into this ruined structure and are living here. Next up, we have this ocean cave design and this idea was actually taken from Sea of Thieves. It was like an update to the game that added like these cool looking cave things and I just got inspired to create one myself. So we've got some like large rib cage kind of bone things here. It's as if some giant monster or like a whale or something has passed away and its bones are still here and kind of mark the entrance to this lush little cave. Uh, I mean it doesn't go anywhere but 
Yeah. So maybe if you have like an underwater base or something like that and you want like a cool entrance, then this is definitely a nice idea for that. Next up, we have this pretty crazy blaze spawner design. As you can see, it's in like a bit of a Japanese kind of style, but in like a nether kind of block palette. So this one over here is meant to be one where you just kind of walk in and you just slay the blazes. I mean, you could probably set it up to be automatic, but we actually have a second variant over here where it is more of like an automatic one. So as you can see, the blazes will spawn. They'll get stuck in this lava and be sent straight down the tunnel thing that leads down here to where we can actually kill them. All of their items will be automatically sorted into these chests and we can also just easily get the XP from them as well right here. Next up, we have four Japanese ideas with the first one here being a Tori gate. So this Tori gate here is made out of pretty much just acacia wood and also prismarine slabs and stairs at the top and on the sides here. And maybe if you're creating like a Japanese village or something, this would be a really nice entrance kind of design for it. For the next Japanese idea, we have a little mini Zen garden. So as you can see on this side here, we have our sand section with a bunch of stones as well. And then on the other side, we have our little bamboo forest. And we also have a pathway that kind of connects these with a bridge as well. Onto the next one, we have this secure tree that is elevated above this man-made pond. So for the secure tree, as you can see, we've used some dark oak wood and used some pink concrete, pink wool, and also some pink concrete powder for the leaves. And now for the final Japanese idea, we just have this nice long bridge here. So we're using acacia wood for the pillars and also the like connect handrails here and also this little bit down below. Next up, we're taking a look at a couple of different interior designs with two of them being more aesthetically pleasing and two being more efficient. So this first one here is our first aesthetic one. As you can see on this side, we've got a nice bookshelf. We've got some hanging plants and lanterns. We've got all of our crafting blocks in this side. And then on the left side, we have some storage and also some furnaces too. For the second aesthetic interior, as you can see, this one's a little bit more storage focused. So we've got more chests around the place and some barrels. We've got our crafting blocks as well. And we also have a nice redstone lamp behind here too. Now onto the more efficient designs that are still pretty aesthetically pleasing. So firstly on the left side here we've got a massive storage wall and then on the right side we have our smelters. And now for the final efficient interior design we have a very similar one to the previous one it's just in a bit of a different layout. So as you can see we've got more barrels on this side this time and then on the right side here we've got our crafting section on the right and then we have our furnaces on the left and they're all divided by this nice armor stand. Next up we have this aesthetic medieval bridge design. So as you can see this one has a predominantly stone theme and it is also elevated up really high from the actual water which is a really nice and easy way to get your bridges looking really cool. So we've got like a multi-layered design here where we've got the handrails then we have like a secondary like underneath kind of section and then we have our leaves here to make it a little bit more vibrant and then all the way down at the bottom we also have this nice little pass through so that you can get to the other side nice and easily. And just as an extra little bonus if you want to watch me build this I have the video for it on my channel so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Next up we have this secret secret underground storage room. I wanted to quickly apologize. I don't know why it's so laggy in this area, so I'm just going to get through this real quick. Yeah, so we can take the tunnel down here through the water to our underground storage area, and this would definitely be a really nice build to add to your world if you run out of storage in your main base and you want to have like a nice secret section. This build also has its own tutorial video on my channel, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Next up, we have some large bridge designs with the first one here being a royal theme. This honestly does look a little bit weird and no one will probably build this, so we're just going to promptly move on. For the next one, we have a ruined theme bridge. So as you can see, we have a giant chunk taken out of the middle here and it's just completely in shambles. The cool thing about this is it can still be used perfectly as a bridge. You just got to do a little jump between the two sides here. So maybe if you have like a ruined village or something like that, this would definitely be a nice bridge to add to that. For the next bridge design, we have a bit of a drawbridge this time. And so yeah, we've just added like a nice slope to this bridge. It kind of dips down and comes back up. We've also got some hanging lanterns under here as well. And now for the final large bridge, we have this Japanese themed one. I've showcased a lot of Japanese stuff in this video. That was not planned. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the roof for this one is pretty crazy and detailed. We've also got a nice bit of elevation to this bridge as well. So it's like in an arched shape and it's very detailed as well. We've got lanterns around the place. We've got fences and fence gates. And yeah, it's, there's a lot going on with this bridge here. Next up, we have this monochrome nether portal design. So for this one, we've hidden all of the obsidian blocks by using some blackstone blocks around the outer rim. And then on the inside, we've used some stone blocks. We've also decorated it by using some covered shroom lights over here, and we've also added in some twisted vines around the place too. And now for this final build, uh, yeah, there's not much going on here, but we just have a detailed cliff design. So if you have a base in the area, this is definitely a really nice way to spruce up your surrounding area, if you're surrounded by cliffs, that is. So here I've just showcased a bunch of ways that you can add some details to your cliffs. So we've added in texture by using stone bricks and also andesite. We've added a bit of an overhang here with some stone stairs and like kind of 
made the grass protrude out a few blocks more from the cliff. We've added this nice kind of like hollowed out area. We have a bit of a sticking out pillar section here too. And then we've also added a grass little hill on this side as well. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some more of my build ideas right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.